Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be using some goodies from the latest Not Too Shabby Box of the Month kit along with the October 2021 sheet load of cards to create some alternatives. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to switch it up. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna be using the October 2021 sheet load of cards for some alternatives today. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the free printable and you're a subscriber to my channel, make sure to check out the description box below for a link to the debut video where I share a look at the first set I made and tell you how to download the printable for free. I also have a process video where I made that first set and gave you some great tips, so I will have the process video linked below as well. This sketch originally calls for two 12 by 12 pattern papers, some solid card socks for matting and for the little paper ribbon, and some vellum, and of course your card bases. Well today I picked out eight pieces of pattern paper from the Not Too Shabby Box of the Month kit, which I will show you here in just a second, and I'm going to see how many cards I can get from it. We will change the cutting just a little bit, and yeah. Let's go ahead and look at what we're going to be using today. Besides the sheet load of cards, I will be using pattern paper, some of the sentiment stamps, and the ephemera from the Not Too Shabby Box of the Month. Now this kit is no longer available, but you can go ahead and get signed up for November so you're insured that you get one. I will have the link in the description box below. You can go and get one kit or you can subscribe and save a little bit more. I do know that some of you get sad when I show something that you can no longer buy, but this just goes to show you that you can switch up things and use what you have. You know, you don't have to use these pattern papers or this ephemera to do what I'm going to do today. You can use what you already have in your own craft room. And I'll bet quite a few of us have some goodies just waiting to be used. As I go to the process, I will switch to a voiceover and I'll let you know about any other products or tools I add. And if I do leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Here's a look at the six pieces I chose from the paper pad. And the first thing we're gonna do is cut these down. The original instructions call for pieces that are two and a quarter inch wide by five inches tall, but so we can get three pieces from each of the six by sixes, I'm going to be cutting them to two inches wide instead. Now I am going to cut down the height to five inch first, and because I want the flannel or the plaid to be kind of even on the background, I cut a half inch off the top and bottom before I rotated it and cut it into three pieces that were the two inches wide. I continued cutting down the rest of the pattern papers. You do want to make sure with your orientation that you make the cut off the correct end. And for the rest of them, I just take the full inch off the top or bottom and then cut down to the two inches wide. Next, I brought in three pieces of eight and a half by 11, kind of a royal blue cardstock. I thought it matched some of the lighter blues in the pattern paper, and I cut these down until I had nine pieces that were four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. And finally, for the cutting I'm going to show on screen, I brought in a piece of craft cardstock and cut myself nine paper ribbons that were a half inch wide and 11 inches tall. I go over this next process in quite a bit of detail on the original process video, which don't forget is linked below. 
but I'm going to go ahead and show you quickly how I use my template to help make folding the paper or the cardstock, I guess, ribbons a lot easier. After folding these, they are a bit crazy, so I go ahead and bring in some glue so I can just adhere the crevices together so they lay flat. I am using my art glitter glue, but I have recently gotten these little bottles to put that into. It's still a fine tip, but the cap is much easier to use. It has a leash so it won't get lost, and it just fits more easily over there. I will link these bottles in the description box below if you want to check them out. All I did was put a little dot of glue next to each fold and I pressed that down for about 3 seconds before sitting it to the side underneath a clear block. I continued to do the same for all of the cardstock ribbons and I let this sit and dry for probably about 5 minutes before moving on. Something I worked on while that was drying was the tearing, but the first thing I needed to do is match up my pattern papers that would go on each card front. Now originally I kind of picked six pattern papers that were three of two pairs that I thought went together, but once I pair up the first set I still have those leftovers. Now you could definitely just use the same together, but I went ahead and I switched it up a little bit. Then I started tearing. I tore off the right side from the left piece and the left side from the right piece. Now again, this is something I go over in the process video, so I would definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already. I continued to tear and I would place each set of pattern papers with a cardstock to the side to kind of make little card kits. Once all of the tearing was done, I went ahead and adhered down the pattern paper pieces. I just tried to make sure there was an even border around the outside edges, and then you would see the little peak of the cardstock where the two pieces met at the torn edges. Now I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I always turn my cardstock so the open area for the new piece is at the bottom, no matter if that's reading correctly or not. So that brings me to my QOTV or question of the video. I want to know, do you have a favorite angle to adhere stuff at? Even right here on the card fronts, you'll notice that after I put my adhesive on, I rotate the card so the fold is actually toward me at the bottom. I just find for myself this is easier for me to get an even border and I'm wondering if you're the same way. I would love for you to let me know in the comments section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I continued adhering the fronts to the card bases until all of those were ready for embellishing. Off camera I used a circle die with stitched edges to cut out nine vellum circles. I also went ahead and put my sentiment, tis the season, on a small stamp block. I will be pairing up or putting a little ephemera on each piece and because I want to make sure that there is room for the sentiment, I'm going to glue down and stamp one each individually. I will be using In the Navy ink from Gina K Designs for my sentiment. Once I know where the presents go on the first piece of vellum, I glued that down once again with the art glitter glue and then I inked up my stamp to stamp it. Now, I then realized that I should probably test this out since I had never used it before and it stamped well right away. So I inked it up again and crossed my fingers and stamped it onto the vellum. Now the reason I cross my fingers is because I'm stamping by hand, I only have one chance and since vellum is a little bit slick, sometimes the stamp will move. But I carefully placed my sentiment where I wanted it, held it in place for probably three or four seconds and pulled it straight up. Luckily that first one turned out okay. So I continued to do the rest of these and just a heads up, normally when I had to stamp nine cards, 
I would use my Misty for this so I could set it up once and just repeat the stamping. But because the stamp was in a different spot on each of the vellum circles, I did have to do it by hand. Now after I had all nine pieces with their ephemera and their stamp, I set these aside to dry while I went up and ate lunch. Now, when I got back down, I could still tell that these were kind of wet. So you'll see here that I would take each one, carefully press it on a piece of cardstock to take off some of the wetness. I did this a couple times with each one, and then I decided to bring in my heat tool and dry it. And you could definitely tell after using the heat tool when the ink dried. It did fade it a little bit, but you can still see it on the final cards. Once all of my focal points had the ink dry on them, I then added the cardstock ribbon to the back. Now sometimes I would have the cardstock ribbon just kind of go left to right, like on the sketch, but other times I would angle it. Once I found the place where I want it to be on the vellum, I would flip it over, carefully add adhesive behind where my ephemera was, and then set that aside to dry. Now I also would put a little adhesive in dots behind the thicker parts of the words if some of the other side of the cardstock ribbon seemed to be flopping around. I let these dry for probably about five minutes once everything was done, and then it was time to get these put onto cards. I matched up each focal point with a card base. If the image itself had some of the patterns from the pattern paper background, I would try to pair those up. Now some I had a portrait orientation on the card, and others that were wider I went with a landscape. Once everything was paired up, I brought in my ATG, added adhesive behind the cardstock ribbon, and placed it onto the card. Now on the original set, I did add foam tape behind this, but I wanted to keep these nice and flat for mailing. Speaking of nice and flat, I did want to add sparkle, but I also wanted it to be thin. So I brought in my Elizabeth Craft Designs clear slash transparent glitter dots, and I put three onto the front of each card. These add a little sparkle, and they're super thin, probably about the same as the ephemera, so it keeps everything nice and flat and can be mailed for one stamp. I continued placing these on there. Sometimes they would be in a triangle, sometimes they would be spread out on the front of the card, and here's a look at the finished nine. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.